Friday morning, the fourth week of Lent. It's 2020, and it's March 27th. Today is the anniversary of the death of Mother Angelica, which I think they said it's been four years, which means 2016. And it was Easter Sunday four years ago when she died. Um, I am hopefully going to be able to nail it, but uh, I have a, a card being going to EWTN. I don't write that well. But I realize the more I record that I do not record that well. <clears throat> I, I talk too slow. I pause too much. I spend too much time thinking. And then when I'm not thinking, I'm not really making any sense. So I was just trying to get some thoughts down. I'm trying to learn a better Spanish trying to get, make sure I understand the Spanish with the Latin. Um, there'll be a lot of pauses in here, I guess. It's now 7 a.m., and these lights will definitely wake up my roommate. <laughs> Father, our source of life, you know our weakness. May we reach out in joy to grasp your hand and walk more readily in your ways. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. What's happened in all this time since Lent of last year? What's happened to me? Well, not understanding the lives of the saints, uh, not understanding who Mary was and is, and not truly understanding God's infinite love and mercy, and really not understanding Jesus, what's happened to me, I... I recognize that the Pope said yesterday morning that idolatry is selective. And we have to look at where we hide. Where is our idolatry hidden? And I know that if I am going to make this public, you know, public confessions are not a good idea. Even private journal entries, you know, confession was made by Jesus for Jesus. And the sacramental seal of the confessional to which California did their best to try to get into is a sacred institution of Christ so you know making the confessions that I've made public in the past was, was not helpful um, I have what has happened to me since Lent of last year it was probably around this time when I started to realize you know I was probably well into going on to Easter you know the, the Holy Week because I knew that Holy Week, I was probably going to be by myself. And I got to the Triduum. <sighs> Stuff was changing. You know, now with the incorporation of the Aurorium, Father Leonard was very helpful. I just, but that's what I really want to say also. What has helped me most recently? 33 Days to Morning Glory by Father Michael Gately. That helped me very much. It's just a simple read. It's one of those books you read just a little bit every day. December 9th, 2019. I did 
when he suggested to do. Uh, what else has helped me? I finally bought myself a better volume two, and I gave my other volume two to a good young man who will make a great life. I miss him terribly because he is my prayer partner. He wanted to be my prayer partner, and I haven't even talked to him now in more than two weeks. What has happened to me? I've stopped making efforts to so many efforts to I'm still failing stop making so many efforts to do what I want I, I seem to understand I seem to be inclined to understand what God's will really means and the Protestant or the Calvinist perception of predestination I think misrepresents what God's will is for each and every one of us because God desires each one of us to return to him but he does leave the choice to us the problem with choice is too many of our pro-choice Christian brothers and sisters misunderstand is as as Moses explains in Deuteronomy you only have one choice and it's life and death there are not several choices of right there's only one right there's only one good there's only one life and just about everything else you choose leads to death that's the choice the freedom that we have is the freedom we have in the redemption of Christ's resurrection the cross is our redemption and that is a freedom from sin because sin as anybody knows sin is probably the most imprisoning thing that happens to us it starts as just a small deception of doubt but what it starts to do the more you are proliferating the more it, it takes over your will. Like every cigarette smoker could tell you, the, the, the easiest cigarette to reject is the first one that you have in the morning. But by the end of the day, if you're trying to quit smoking, I guess, by the end of the day, you can't even remember how many you've smoked until your pack is empty. But each one of those comes with the will to stop. But the easiest one of all the cancerous sticks you ingest, the easiest one to refuse is the first one of the day. And if you are going to choose life, you have to start right away. Because the more that the will is impaired and grasped by the clutches of evil, the harder it is to say no. There's no freedom there. So on Friday, when we remember every Friday, we remember the death of our Lord and Savior. And we remember the cross, the redemption and the end. When the Son of Man is lifted up like the bronze seraph, all will be called to return to him. But you have to return to him. You simply cannot muddle your way through right. You either choose life in its entirety. And you cast away your idolatry, your hidden idolatry. I, I am selling. And I am donating. And I am giving away what I consider to be the treasures which I didn't even realize the kind of idolatry that they were. I mean, just think about the things that you kneel down in front of. If you're a man, sadly, there are things that you kneel down in front of that you should never have started. But you will kneel in front of those idols. 
And again, the Pope was saying yesterday, he was looking at Moses' uh, reading, I mean, the reading from Exodus, and he was saying, you know, these people were given to idolatry, and God was furious. Moses was saying, you know what? Punish me. But anyway, we, we hide, and it's selective. I love that, I love that he said that, that, that idolatry is selective. You, you, you manage to see all the good things about your idol, and you forget all the slave-type things that it involves. So thank you. Thank you for speaking through the word. So today's readings I haven't even read yet. It's just after 7. So the Eucharistic fast, even for a spiritual communion, is still an important reverence to do. You should take the time to at least read your readings. But remember the Anima Christi. Remember... Our Blessed Mother. Anyway, it's that's enough, I guess.